Hi, I'm Matt with Schematical, and today we're talking about how to boot up an API gateway that will proxy web requests to your various microservices or just to use as a server for a backend Lambda to get requests to the Lambda. That way you're not paying for an always-on ALB. It's really convenient. The API gateway is an amazing tool. It allows you to boot up these edge nodes and proxy requests back to your VPC. This is not going to be a comprehensive like everything about API gateway but this is going to be more on how to use the scripts I'm giving you, open source, free, Apache 2 license, do whatever you want with them, and how to use those to build up your infrastructure. Scalable infrastructure that my clients use, my clients that you know, service millions of customers that if their company goes down, their, you know, their website goes down, they're losing $100,000 an hour. This is the same stuff that they use, the same architecture, and I'm handing it out to you, so go ahead and use it. Um, if you're interested in chatting with me, if you have any questions on this stuff, leave a comment. Otherwise, hop on the Discord. I'm happy to talk there or find me at schematical.com uh, where I have other services and ways to engage with me. All right, let's start by explaining what the API gateway is and how the flow kind of works with it. The API gateway is a proxy. So here you can see we've got an API gateway instance and it's proxying traffic to ALBs and to a Lambda there. You can also proxy it to other services, S3. There's about a million of them right now. But let's just start by tracing our traffic flow. So we have the internet. It calls out to route 53 to get the DNS for, let's just say, schematical.com. Okay, schematical.com, it responds with the DNS for this API gateway. Now the API gateway knows schematical.com, the, the host name, gets routed to, let's just say, this ALB. Or you could do schematical.com slash something goes to this ALB instead. Um, or chaos pixel goes to like schematical.com slash chaos pixel goes to this. Those aren't real URLs. It's actually a different URL. You're welcome to it if you want it. It's not hard to find, but that's how the traffic works. Now it doesn't actually send a network packet across here. Okay. It would to here. It forwards network packets that way. But when it comes to a Lambda, what it does is an invoke. Okay. So it takes that, that, um, network packet and it would, convert that into JSON that then gets forward to the Lambda. The Lambda does whatever it does. I guess here it talks to ElastiCache and then responds with more JSON that the API gateway will take and convert back into a network packet and send back out as a response. So that's how it works. Let's go ahead and dig in to the actual API gateway. So here's a list of some of my API gateways. Let's start with the big one. So I've got some for some of my web areas, but there's one main one that actually handles multiple backend services. In this case right now, it's only set up for chaos pixel, but I'm going to route chaos net through there and I need to get more clever on my naming conventions. But if I do projects that are correlated, I can basically proxy different microservices here. You can have one of these URLs for every single one of the microservices. Slash chaos slash any will get you nowhere. Basically, it'll, it takes you to a mock response, which is just basic hello world HTML. Slash chaos pixel, on the other hand, will proxy you to a Lambda, just the way I described in the bottom there. And this Lambda is chaos pixel v1. You can see this fancy text here. That means it's going to need a stage variable for the ENVs. Let's take a look at where these stage variables come from. This is our, our routes as they are right now. You can split up those routes into different versions, which are basically for each environment. They're called stages. Uh, so I've got my dev here and my prod. It gets real confusing if you have a staging environment, but that's okay. And you could have a prod B, I've done prod A, B switches with this stuff before. And that has my routes and basically a copy of where they go to. So I could say, if I added in a new route here, I say create method, da, 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 I could then deploy it to dev first before I deploy it to production. And you can actually see those deployment histories over here, over here in the development history. Let's take a look at the Terraform scripts. Now, this is a weird one. A lot of my stuff just exists in one environment and boots up like a microservice or something of that nature, or a monolith if that's your game. I've got no problem with that. Different tools for different jobs. So here for my back end, which is the one we're just looking at there, we are going to create a REST API. Now, they also have other types of API gateways, web sockets, things like that. That's a bit beyond the scope of this video, but just understand they're out there. This one's just RESTful API, HTTP traffic, HTTPS traffic, that's it. So I like to boot up one that you can use with all your microservices. So right now you just saw Chaos Pixel, but again, I'll add in Chaos Net and any other backend services that I'm, I'm working up as time goes on. 
I'm also going to give it that default method of none. So I've got like basically a hello world I can hit to make sure I've got the website. And here's the root uh, integrations. This actually associates that mock HTTP endpoint right here with the API gateway and so on. So that then gets passed around in our environment variable. So we've got that base API gateway. Then because I'm sharing this with other microservices, I'm creating one for the dev. So this is a dev environment, one stage basically, one of, that's this dev, and then one for production right here. So again, this is the actual module in use, prod environment, prod environment there. So we'll go over these variables in more detail later, but we're gonna pass it since they're both using the same schematical.com, we're going to pass it the schematical.com cert, we're going to pass it the API gateway we created, and we're going to pass it the schematical.com hosted zone ID and name, and I'm turning on x-ray tracing at this point. Again, that all gets passed in this, as this environment info, so as I initialize other projects, I can pass that around. Now, Again, right now here, this schematical.com is such a small project that I'm not giving everything its own workspace for each environment. Uh, I would strongly recommend that if you're doing something really big, uh, but not for the point, purpose of this demo. So here we're passing that API gateway ID and the base path mapping to chaos pixel right here. Chaos Pixel is then going to pass that to its individual environment references. So here I made a module for the environment. And we're reusing that same module for production and staging, which is really nice because, of course, then you've got consistency between the two. If there's ever a problem, they've, you're, they're literally using the exact same code and you can you know, pass in variables uh, for scale. So if you wanted like one that be beefed up or not, you pass that in as a variable. Other than that, all the resources will be exactly identical when you run that Terraform apply. So here, um, the most important parts are that I'm passing in the hosted zone stuff and I'm passing in the API gateway ID, especially that stage ID, because that's going to be uh, that's going to be very important because the dev stage is going to point at this dev chaos pixel environment. And there inside the environment module, I'm booting up at least one Lambda service here. So this Lambda service. Uh, I, I've gone through it in another video, so please check that out for more details. So zooming out again from that module, here's that where the module is being called for the where the Lambda service is being declared inside of here. We go ahead and we're going to look at the API gateway integration where we reference the Lambda. So we're creating here a new API gateway resource called Chaos Pixel. And again, that corresponds with this right here. That's defining that. Then we declare an API gateway method, any, which has no authorization, and that is this one right there. And in that one, we're creating an API gateway integration that points at the Lambda. You don't actually see any of this uh, in the UI. It just assumes it's the same region, but it goes ahead and creates that Lambda SC Chaos Pixel V1 environment GQL invocations, which is SC Chaos Pixel. SC Chaos Pixel V1 stage name dash GQL. So this, this is just a fancy way of referencing that in your code. This is very important. And again, all this stuff right now is in Project Chaos, Chaos Pixel. I understand this is one of the really complicated ones, which is part of the reason why I saved it for last, because this is a bit abstract. We're proxying things around but uh, if you have any questions, hop on the Discord. Uh, I'll be happy to answer some questions there, leave a comment. Um, we do do a group coaching thing. So check it out, it's in my, go to schematical.com and you'll see where that group coaching is. So you can get some hands-on help. I consult on this. So if you're, you know, feel like you're in over your head or you lost your infrastructure as code guy, or you guys just want to transfer over to infrastructure as code because your AWS infrastructure is a mess and it's all over the place, I consult on this stuff. So call me up. I guess I don't really have a phone number, but, you know, sign up for a consultation I'm there to help. Uh, if you have any other requests for Terraform type videos, let me know. Uh, I'm happy to help. I'm all about teaching. A rising tide raises all ships. So even, even... Hopefully not the dark web ship there. It's under the post-it notes. Um, bad joke, Matt. Bad joke. Well, without further ado, I'm Matt with Schematical, and uh, hopefully you learned something today. Cheers.